All right, using this uh, digital honors students mentorship presentation. Once you have your line art, you choose your local flat colors. You could also think of that as the base color. Base color is the term we use when we're digitally painting. Because that's doesn't need to be your end all be all. That's what you build up on top of with things like duotone. And duotone is our next step. If we want to make our sandwich a little bit more complicated, right now all we have is one color layer. So what's on top of our sandwich? Or we'll work from the bottom up. On the bottom is our white bread, just blank white layer. I have that locked. On top of that is our new flat color. We improved our flat color. We replaced it entirely. I started with this, and then I did more within it. Subdividing it, creating that circle. So you can build up your flat color. It doesn't need to just be in the shapes that are contained, but that's the way you start. And then on the top, we have our line art. All right, so the line art on its own just looks like that. So they're all, they all play their role. And instead of erasing them as I go, I just turn them off and I label them. So that's my finished flat color. This is like a cheese sandwich. I have one layer in between my slices of bread. But what if I want to make a more complicated sandwich? Like this is peanut butter and I really don't want just a peanut butter sandwich. I want to add jelly because I find it a little dry otherwise. So that's when you go to duotone. This is the next step in digital coloring. Duotone is taking your flat local color and doing light and shadow variations to it. So you can see the shadow variations on the sides of the faces here, the bottom of the tail, underneath on the neck. You can see the light variations on the top of the things. So this is just kind of a generic top lighting, the top of the beak, the top of the wing. The more reflective you want the material to seem, the more you're going to have a contrast between highlights and shadows in your duotone color. Now, as we do this, it's important not to just make it all one layer, right? We don't want to mix the jelly into our peanut butter. We want to keep them as separate layers. It tastes better. It looks better. And then if we decide, oh, we don't want quite so much jelly, then we can remove some of the jelly without affecting the peanut butter. So we make as many layers as we want in our sandwich, in our coloring sandwich. So what I did is I made a duplicate of my flat color group. And instead, I'm going to call this my duotone color group. Because you can take as many layers as you want for each of these steps. But these are the basic steps I want you to know. And then within that, I can merge that so it's all one. This is where I've made a duplicate of my flat color. I can turn my flat color on underneath. And now I want to add shadows and highlights. Now there's a really easy way to do this. Really, really easy way to do this. But it's a little bit abstract. And that is I can take my selection on my new duotone copy layer and I can just make loops where I think the light should be. And then I can simply go to image adjustments and levels and I can brighten up those spots. Or I can darken them. This can go either way. This is with your mid-tone levels adjustment. So maybe I brighten it up there. Maybe I darken it up here. And I can make these shapes as specific as I want or as loose. And I say image adjustments, levels, and now I'm going to push that mid-tone slider the other way. And what's nice about that method, of just using that lasso, cutting through it all, if I turn off the line art, you'll see what it's doing to my flat color, is it's doing what's called hard edge duotone, like animation. It's a crisp edge. If I want the highlight to extend to this side, it will cut through all of those shapes. Image, adjustment, levels, brighten it up. 
without ever changing the color because levels is a light and shadow adjustment. It will never make my orange yellow. It will never make my red purple, right? Now, sometimes you want really, really targeted highlights. So maybe I want one just right here. Like you have a highlight in the eyeball or a highlight on the nose and on the cheeks. So I can do that the same way. Image, adjustment, this is all within a duotone layer. Levels, brighten. Now even though I started it by copying my flat colors, so it doesn't change if I turn my flat color underneath. What's nice is you do it on a separate layer, so if you ever feel like you do it too much, you can dial it back. See, maybe I want shadows under the eyes. Now this I'm doing in a really, really loose way, just with my lasso kind of cutting through everything, and then going to image adjustment levels, playing with these sliders. And it can give kind of a really nice dimensional effect but sometimes we overdo it. So now when I add the black outlines back in, it feels a little too dark maybe. And so then, that's my flat color. I wanna see if the duotone is an improvement. That's hard edge duotone. That is an improvement, but maybe I wanna dial it back a little bit with opacity. I'm gonna scrape a little of that jelly off. Now the problem with hard edge duotone, like we see in a lot of animation, is that the outlines of the shadows and highlights themselves become really prominent. And can sometimes even distract a little bit. So to be a lot more precise about how we do it, we can do it this way. I'll make a duplicate again. I'll merge it, just because I did it as a group. I'm going to call this clean duotone instead of just kind of loopy all over duotone. And now this time I'm going to first use my magic wand with contiguous turned on to select an area like the muzzle. And then I'm going to go to image adjustment. And let's say I want some shadows on this muzzle and I go to levels and I'm going to darken it, right? Then say, okay. Now I'm gonna use my lasso with option, which makes it su subtract from the selection. And I will subtract away in a very clean way where I want the highlights to be. And now it only affects the blue. or I subtract away where I want the shadows to be, rather, because that's what I'm not going to erase. So let's say, I know I want the shadows to be under the nose, so I hold that option to subtract, and I erase it like this, and then I hit delete, right? And then I'll have a really clean duotone just under the nose. Or I can keep working on it, select that one color, let's do it maybe in the eyes, I can actually select both of them holding down uh, shift. And now I'm going to go to image adjustment, this is in my duotone, levels, and I'm going to darken accidentally have that selected too. So this is where you can be more precise because no matter what, it won't change anything outside of your selections. And I'll darken those eyes and then I'll erase out with my lasso where I think 
the highlights should be. And you can do it really in very subtle ways, in more advanced ways. But that's kind of a clean way of doing duotone. Selecting away. Now, either way can work, and you can even layer them on top of each other so that they augment each other. And then you can play with blending modes. So one of the advantages of building this with different layers is you can set different layers to different blending modes. So some basic blending modes to play with. We've played with some before. Multiply, it will darken everything that's underneath. It's like everything layers on top of each other. So if I, I take this duotone layer and I set it from normal instead to multiply, it darkens everything. And then, of course, I could play with opacity too. Next, you have darken, which is slightly different than multiply because it will just use the darker colors from that layer you're selecting. So multiply looks like that. Everything gets dark. Darken will just use the darker colors from your selected layer. Overlay, these are ones that uh, past students have found really helpful. We used overlay when we were doing non-destructive dodging and burning, but overlay will simultaneously lighten your lights and darken your darks. So it's a great way to kind of push your duotone to its extremes. And then, of course, you can always augment these with opacity. And then lastly, screen is, if you want everything to be brighter, it's the opposite of multiply. It kind of layers up all the highlights. And you see how duotone is still there in all of these, in little ways, based on what you want. So I like to do it in a few different ways to kind of clean up my duotone, especially for a flat graphic like this. So let's see. You can make as many layers of duotone as you want. So I'm going to use normal there. I'm going to put the clean on top of the normal, and then I'm going to use blending modes to sync that through. I think I'll probably want overlay to get the most dramatic and play with the opacity on these different levels. Right. Now, I don't love, love it in the nose there, so then I can always adjust each layer. That's the beauty of having it layered. Maybe I'll keep that one highlight. And then there are more procedural, procedural ways to play with duotone effects, which can be helpful as well. See, I want that, but I want it to be a little bit fainter. So let's do this. Oh. And notice I'm getting away from my color reference. I don't even have my color reference turned on right now. The, the